DMT, the spirit molecule. If you know what DMT is, and you've come to this video searching for educational purposes and extractions, then you're in the right place. I'm not going to go over an overview of what DMT is, because you should already know what it is if you are here. Now, I'm starting a new series, which is going to involve different methods of extracting DMT. This first video will be a salt extraction, which I did get from DMT Nexus. I will leave the link to the tech in the description below. Now, first, before we get into anything, any methods, any steps, any images, I'm going to have to go over a quick disclaimer. So, DMT is potentially illegal, and I do not encourage or condone the use of this substance, where it is against the law. However, I do accept that legal drug use does occur, and I believe that offering my own personal experience and responsible harm reduction information is imperative to keep people safe. So for that reason, this video and this guide is purely designed to ensure the safety of those who decide to use the substance. Now, we're gonna get straight into the video, going over the methods, the steps, and everything that you're going to need. So, let's go. So, during this tech, I'm going to be doing it in 10 simple steps, and I will explain each step throughout this video. So, the first step will be weighing out your product. Second step will be putting your product into a suitable jar. The third step will be acidifying. The fourth step will be salting. On to the fifth step, which will be basifying. The sixth step will be the addition of your non-polar solvent. The seventh step will be pulling your solvent. The eighth step will be freezing. And what to do after the freeze? The ninth step will be drying. And the tenth step will be scraping up all that DMT. Step one, weighing. So throughout this tech, I'm going to be using a small amount, just 20 grams of mimosa. I do advise to use powdered bark, but if you can't obtain powdered bark and can only obtain whole or shredded bark, then use a glass blender and try and shred it up until you can get a finer powder as you can get. And then we can move straight on to step two. So step two, pretty simple. All it involves is basically just putting up all that powdered bark into your suitable mixing jar. I did have to use a funnel. I had to make one out of paper. So if necessary, then please use a funnel so you don't drop anything. Step three, what you are doing this tech is you want to use 80 milliliters of deionized water or as I said, tap water is also fine. And basically you wanna just put that into a pan and bring it to a bit of a boil. Then you're gonna to want to add 24 milliliters of vinegar and then take it off the hob. You're then going to pour that acidic solution into your mixing bottle. Once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to put some more tap water into a pan to about halfway, bring that to a boil and turn off the heat wait for around 10 minutes for it to cool down. Then you're gonna to wanna to shake your bottle and place it into the, the heat bath. You're gonna to wanna to leave it there for approximately an hour and come to it occasionally, basically just to heat it up if it gets too cool. And then we can move on to the fourth step. So the fourth step involves salting, which is basically making a saline solution so you're going to want to weigh out 12 grams of salt. You're going to want to get 40 milliliters of water, put that into a pan and slowly heat the water up while adding your salt. You're then going to want to stir it until all the salt's dissolved. And then you're going to, then you're going to want to add that saturated saline solution to your mixing bottle and leave it just to stand for approximately 15 minutes before moving on to the basifying stage. Now, onto the basifying stage. Before we get into any of these steps, 
I do need to give you a bit of a caution and a bit of a warning because we are using sodium hydroxide in this stage and sodium hydroxide can be pretty dangerous it's basically like a, like an acid it's an acid basically and it can can cause some pretty bad burns so you don't want to get any on your skin or any in your eyes if that does happen go to the bathroom wash your hands wash your eyes even if it takes you 20 minutes make sure it's all out because you don't want to be losing your vision over this so i do advise to wear safety glasses also to wear gloves just to protect yourself basically and one more thing never add hot water to slye it will react violently always add your lye to your water so on to the first step of this stage you're going to want to weigh out 20 grams of sodium hydroxide because during an extraction you basically it's even so if you're using 20 grams of mimosa you're going to want to use 20 grams of sodium hydroxide 50 grams of mimosa 50 grams of sodium hydroxide if you get that pretty simple so weigh out 20 grams of sodium hydroxide put 80 milliliters of cold deionized water into a measuring jug you're then going to want to slowly add the sodium hydroxide because as I say it can react as soon as it, a chemical reaction does occur as soon as you place it into the water so use a metal spoon add a little bit at a time and just carry on stirring it until it's all dissolved once it's dissolved you're then going to want to add the caustic soda mix into your mixing bottle you're then going to want to top your bottle up with 56 milliliters of water and place it into that heat bath one more thing as well which I forgot before you do place it into that heat bath you're going to want to vigorously shake that bottle and it will turn to a dark black straight away which is a good sign you're doing the right thing so shake it vigorously and then put it into a heat bath you're going to want to leave that there for around two hours and I usually come back every 25 minutes turn up the heat a little bit turn it off shake it put it back into the heat bath and then just leave it there for the full two hours and then we can move on to the next step so once you've taken it out of the heat bath you're then going to move on to step six which is adding the non-polar solvent which is the lighter fluid you're going to want to measure out 50 milliliters of naphtha and pour it into your mixing bottle you're then going to want to shake it in a figure of eight fashion so I'll say like this shake it like that very not too hard just do it like that so all the naphtha mixes in do it for around 30 seconds you're then going to want to unscrew the cap to basically release any pressure build up you're going to want to repeat this four times basically so figure of eight fashion put it into some warm water because the heat basically pulls it pulls the dmt up out the base of our mix and into the non-polar solvent so repeat this four times it should take around 45 minutes and then we can move on to the seventh step which we'll be pulling so the seventh step which is pulling pretty simple step what you're going to want to do is get your turkey baster like that you're going to want to put it into your mixing jar and you're going to want to carefully suck out that top layer of, of naphtha you don't want to be getting any of the base fine mix which is the black layer underneath don't want to get that any of that in there so pull up this mix and squirt it into your roasting dish you're going to want to again get your cling film and pull it tightly over your dish to basically make it airtight and watertight and then you want to go and place it in your freezer for around 12 to 18 hours approximately ideally overnight you your first pull may be a bit saturated which is a good sign it shows the dmt is there later pulls may be a bit more yellowy but so do that any other pulls you want to do i ideally do around four pulls so repeat steps six and seven four more times giving you five pulls in total leave them in the freezer and then we'll go to bed wake up in the morning and we'll have some dmt now you've waken up bright and early you want to get straight to the freezer so that's what you're going to do after 12 to 18 hours go straight to the freezer 
take out your dishes you're going to want to unwrap them and then get another mixing jar pour the naphtha into the storage jar which can be used for later pulls leave that there you're going to want to put your dish upside down on a towel basically to just drain off any excess naphtha because speed is critical here because it will re-dissolve back into the naphtha so put it onto a towel and just leave it for around 10 minutes and then we can move basically onto the next stage of the drying so in the ninth step the drying you're going to want to straight away put your dish up against the wall get a cold fan i use a little fan like this just a simple fan and let it blow in your dishes for a good 20 minutes just to make sure it's all dry you'll see that it's dry all the fluid will be off there there'll be no water droplets remaining and then we can move on to the scraping stage so the last stage pretty simple get yourself a Stanley knife scrape up all your crystals it may be like a snow globe white crystals or you may have a bit of a dried oily goo whatever you've got scrape it up place them onto a piece of paper leave them to dry for another 30 minutes or something like that just basically make sure it's all dry then for storage place it onto some tin foil and basically just seal it up and keep it fresh so it doesn't oxidize or basically denature and there we go that is the end of the tech in the next video i will be doing probably an acid um, I'll probably do a straight to base tech, see what I get with that. But for now, I'll be doing another acid to base tech and just using 50 grams instead, as I got a quite, quite a good amount from 20 grams. So, if you do like these videos, as I said, subscribe to my channel, like the video, hit that little bell icon in the corner so you get updates straight away. And I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to leave your comments below as well.